A boy misunderstood. Say, I climb uh, us. Uh, Say, I'm climbing This week, I go on the hunt for technology to understand autism and make life a little easier for those with a disorder. I'm Preston Lim, and I'm a computer scientist. These days, I build programs to help government agencies run like well-oiled machines. But I also spent years studying bioengineering, exploring how technology can be applied to meet challenges in biology, health, and medicine. Hey, Tommy, record a video. Okay. Four trillion U.S. dollars is spent worldwide on technology every year to supercharge our lives. And in this series, I find out if the machines and programs that have changed my life are also improving the lives of those with special needs. I can feel the grip. Yeah. I'll be working with engineers, scientists, and companies. You just need to tap on this. Do you need to go to the toilet, love? We can create some kind of scenes to encourage him to go to sleep on time. To find out if more can be done. Wait, you dry your hair, dry your body. Then you can wear your shirt, then you open the door, okay? Wait! Hey, close the door. Wear underwear. And then shirt and pants. Yeah, you wear your pants and wear your underwear first. Stop the stories in the head, Chula. Wrong side. Wrong side. I have ten times. One, two, three. Yeah. Ten, ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then hang up the tower. Good job, well done. Bob and Hui Hui's child, Jinla, is 13. Yet he can't dress himself unsupervised, nor express clearly what he needs to say. How much is the fried rice? Papo. How much is the fried rice? Did, 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 How much is the fried rice? This, uh, how much is the fried rice? It's... Two? Two? One. One dollar. One dollar. Okay, Jinla has autism spectrum disorder, a condition that affects 1 in 150 children in Singapore to varying degrees. Well done. Okay, go rinse your mouth and wash your hands. He was uh, three years old. The time he attended this preschool, and then the teacher feedback to us that he doesn't really have much eye contact and has very minimal verbal skills. They were a bit concerned. Uh, and that's why we went to see a pediatrician. It's actually on the, um, the 31st of December. We get the reports from the doctors. Three, two, two one! I have totally no idea what's autism about. But initially, I, was, I said like, if it's really an illness or anything, just cure. La. I mean, just earn the money and then just see the doctor and then make it, make it cure. And then the doctor said, no, you won't cure. You're upset. All, all, you're you're upset. Griefing. You cry. Yeah. Cry almost every night. There will definitely be griefing. Mm. And then after that, um, acceptance. And also learn how to cope with this. Mm. We used to work at the newsroom. We love our job. That's the first thing that we change our career, quit a full-time job and then become a freelancer. And then she also quit her job as a journalist and then become a freelancer translator. I think that's the first sacrifice. Yeah. The sacrifice was needed 
because taking care of Jin Le is a full-time job. Jin Le cannot be left alone. And there's the extra time and effort needed to teach him even the most basic life skills. When he was younger, it was also hard to train him um, like toileting skills, like what would come normally to the other kids. And when he finally could go toilet on his own and all that, well, we were also relieved. It's a big milestone because for certain schools, they require the children to be toilet trained before they can allow him to be enrolled. It's the same with every skill, every task, every assignment. Hi, rabbit ear. Hi, yeah. All of them require exhaustive step-by-step -step instructions. To that end, even simple items around the house have to be labeled for the instructions to make sense to Chinle. And like many autistic children, Chinle can have sudden, unexplained meltdowns, which takes a toll on his parents. When there's a meltdown, he can't tell us why he's upset. Sometimes you cry for no reason, so we have to guess. I want. What do you want? I want. What do you want? We want to try to ask him why you feel sad. Because I'm crying, but why you cry? Because I'm sad, but why you sad? Because I'm crying, but but why you cry? Because I'm sad. So he keep repeating, repeating. So like you cannot find the find the why. I think that's the things that are very frustrating. Uh. Two years ago, we went to China. There was a delay in the flight. He was so upset he even bit bop on his shoulder. I cry because. He couldn't express himself, so he just expressed by crying and shouting loudly and then biting. No biting. Sometimes you will try to scold him, but after you scold him and you realise that there's, there's no point, you just escalate everything. We don't understand what's going on in his mind, and yet he cannot express himself. Autism comes in a huge spectrum. Being unable to communicate is common, but comes in varying degrees. Some on the spectrum who can express themselves better report having a sensory overload from the world around them in a lead up to a meltdown. Virtual reality has long been touted as the best way to transport a person to a different world. Which is why, since the 1990s, researchers have explored using VR to help people with autism. Back in 2017, I built this VR app prototype called Dreamscape. It's meant to help prevent kids with autism from having a meltdown or to help them recover from one more quickly. Through the app, a child can escape into a moonlit landscape while listening to soothing classical music. He's then told to track shooting stars. When paired with a wearable, the app can read the heart rate of the autistic child and adjust its audio-visual stimulus accordingly. What I'd hoped to do was to help the child regain a sense of control in an overwhelming situation. My VR project never went beyond the prototype stage, but others have used VR to help folks with autism in practical ways. Such as helping people without the condition understand the sensory overload experienced by an autistic person that triggers a meltdown. Just wait there one minute, I'm just gonna get a ticket, okay? One example is the VR film Too Much Information by the National Autistic Society in the UK. I felt anxious and overwhelmed watching this. And that, I suppose, is the objective of the film. For us to enter an autistic mind. (laughs) 
I got in touch with the National Autistic Society in the UK to find out what motivated them to make the VR film. What impact do you hope that these videos will have? Well, autism is still quite a heavily misunderstood condition. We know that in the United Kingdom, around 99% of people have heard of autism, so almost the whole population. Um, but when we interviewed autistic people and their families and asked them, do you think the public understands autism? Um, only 16% said that they thought the public had a good understanding of autism. I'm not naughty. I'm autistic. Why is it necessary to use VR to help people understand autism? A lot of the times people see autistic people uh, and think they're behaving strangely, for instance, actually, when you imagine something from an autistic person's perspective and think about how overwhelming the day-to-day -day situation can be with all the sounds and the noise, it can be much easier to understand why an autistic person might be behaving the way they are. And when you created this video, how did you involve persons with autism in giving you the insights. The biggest ever survey of autistic people, uh, their families, their friends, people working um, in the field of autism, based on what people have said they want the public to understand more about autism. The one thing that was heavily reported was a feeling of being over undersensitive um, to sensory experience. So things like we see coins rattling on the ground, which um, for an autistic person can be a very overwhelming sound. Um, the smell of perfume can be very overwhelming. Um, bright lights from TV screens can feel like um, much more intense than, than it feels to someone else. And the National Autistic Society isn't alone in deploying VR this way. I've learned previously that VR is also being used to create public awareness for depression. What do I do to deserve this? After all, VR is the closest thing to putting you in someone else's shoes. The National Autistic Society tells me that their VR film not only creates better public awareness for autism, but it's also helping caregivers better understand the sensory overload experienced by their loved ones with autism. Which is why I'm here to show the film to Bob and Huihui, Jinla's parents. Jinla is 13 years old and has autism. His meltdowns often confound his parents. Stay calm, you know. No biting. But through virtual reality, or VR, I've come to understand the sensory overload that could cause an autistic person to have a meltdown. Naughty. I'm autistic. I'm meeting Jinla's parents for the first time, and I'm bringing along these VR glasses. I'm hoping to give Bob and Huihui a whole new perspective of what their son experiences on a daily basis. Hello. I'm gonna hit go and go. Okay. It would be great if VR could do for the couple what it did for me. Enter the world of Jinla. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So I guess this one's a little special as well because it was crafted based on the interviews conducted with persons with autism. So it's trying to distill their experiences and trying to recreate something that's similar to their description of it. So what exactly was accurately depicted in the experience with your experience with Jinla? The noises. When we bring him to a busy shopping mall, sometimes he will cover his ears. He's very sensitive to high pitch. High pitch and very low pitch, low pitch. noises. Hmm. So whenever he hears that, he will cover his ears. 
Was any of the information in the video new to you? No, I, I think also for us, it's a kind of reminder for us that sometimes while he has a meltdown, sometimes we also forget that they are sensitive to certain things. He had quite a huge meltdown last night. I mean, we're trying to find out what what's caused the, the what's the reason. Is it because of the homework? Sometimes we forgot about there are some other things that maybe other we missed out. Yeah, the triggers maybe mm. we mm. missed out. And that's precisely why the VR video was created. Together with other 2D videos, they form part of a bigger public awareness campaign in the UK. A campaign which could be useful in Singapore too. Are you okay? How can I help? I'm autistic and sometimes I get too much information. They are very rigid. They need to have a schedule and then when there are changes, sometimes they cannot cope. Uh, let's say we want to go to the supermarket, we have to let him know in advance, prep him first, what we're we going to buy. Sometimes we get upset if there's a change in routine. Whenever if he has a meltdown or whatever, we'll say, hey, sorry, sorry, he's a special needs child, which is why he's behaving this way. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes when he's behaving oddly in the train, he touches someone accidentally or whatever, we'll try to say, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. sorry, he's a special needs so child. Now we'll make, make fun of ourselves, say we, are, we, we call ourselves the sorry, sorry parent. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, because he has no <laughs> sense of personal space, so sometimes when he's in the train, he'll sit very close to others. Try to look at someone. Or try to look at others, what, what, what's in their phone, what, what games are they playing. Then some people will get very frustrated or they'll like, why is this child behaving so oddly and then sitting so close to me? There was a store, they used all their boxes to make it into a Christmas tree. I think you went to the shop and then you just push all the boxes and they say, Bowling! You know, ha 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 ha! The time was quite young. Three or four Three or four. Times. The sales girl was so angry, you know. I said, so sorry, 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 sorry. I was trying to, trying to clean up the, the place. Then he went to the other corner. Bowling! He was so happy. I tried to scream at him and then scold him. He just laughed and he just keep laughing. Bowling, bowling. The sales lady was my the, was the first person that I talked to, and I, I don't even know what's the proper phrase to say. It. Like he has, is it autist, autistic, or he has autism, or what? Then the lady look at me and say, "Oh, it's okay. You calm him now." And then I will settle everything. At the time, I was very grateful. Hello. Hi, Bob. Hi, Hui. Jin Le. A few weeks later, I experienced for myself just how stressful minding Jin Le can be. Well, stressful for me, that is. It started out pretty uneventfully. Then, Bob and Hui Hui thought it might be a good idea for Jin Le to practice crossing the road on his own. It's one of the things they do to teach Jinla to be as independent as possible. Jinla, where are we going? Go to the traffic light, okay? When you go to the traffic light, what should you do? Yeah, when you cross the road, you must raise your hand, right? Red light stop. Green man? Go. So he's going to try and cross by himself? Yeah. How often do you do this? Do you let him do this? Uh, we... How often? Uh? We... As and when. As and when. <laughs> we get the opportunity. So from our house, go to grandma's house. We try a few times. Uh. I cross the road and then go home. Okay, China, bye-bye. He crossed. Bye, China. China, go. Yes, keep raising your hands. Well done, China. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we're just worried that, you know, when there are elderly people next to them, like, sometimes he doesn't watch his personal space. Oh, he accidentally or, knocks. Or accidentally knock them. Right. Then it's quite dangerous. Oh, he's gonna oh, go oh, over. Oh, oh, <laughs> Maybe I can jaywalk over. Hey. Okay, yeah, 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 see, see, see. see. Yeah, oh. Oh no. Jin La! Jin La! Wait for me! In the end, it was mom to the rescue. I was sweating buckets, but Bob seemed quite calm about it. 
For almost a year now, Bob and Huihui have been trying to get Jin Le to learn how to cross the road by practicing at real traffic junctions. That's hair-raising to say the least. If pilots have been learning how to fly a plane by training in a simulator first, I'm pretty sure we must have similar technology to teach children road safety without risking life or limb. Which is why I'm here at Tech Able, a candy store of assistive technologies set up by SG Enable and the Society for the Physically Disabled. And I think I have the best guide for the place. Alvin Tan, who probably has the coolest job title in town, Technology Catalyst. It's his job to look for new technologies and find practical ways for them to be useful for folks in Singapore with special needs. We try to encourage local innovation. We bring together the stakeholders and hopefully they can develop more customized solutions. So what is this? 3D printed coin holder. We actually took the design off the internet it's open source design, and with some help from engineering group, we customize it to fit Singapore coins. We have the 10 cents, the 50 cent coin, and the 20 cent coin over here. How does this help someone like Jin Le? Right. So for a person with autism like Jin Le, sometimes they will feel anxious when they have to deal with a lot of coins. So this alleviates that situation by providing them a simple template so that they only have to deal with only a few coins. Hence, we make it easier for them to pick out the coins they need and then to pay for purchases. That's really smart. Let me show you the eye mirror. Now, this eye mirror is an interactive module. So the eye mirror is an interactive software that teaches basic traveling skills to persons with disabilities, such as you know, topping off an easy link card or the crossing of the roads. So for the eye mirror, it simulates the local environment and it helps them to get used to the environment in a safe place. The interactive mirror uses non-immersive VR technology. It's a life-sized simulator that will teach students how to travel from one place to another. It focuses on tasks like observing traffic rules. Okay, it's green now. Following instructions. So basically you have to raise your hand to start walking. Okay, yeah. there we go. Sounds exactly like the simulator for Chinla that I was looking for. And we made it. This is your mission, should you choose to undertake it. It's a visit to your grandmother on your own. It's a 400 meter walk, with three roads to cross, including one busy traffic junction. Reach grandma's place on the opposite side. It sounds simple enough for a 13 year old boy, but Jinla has autism. Over the past year, his parents have been teaching him how to travel independently, starting with road safety. You see, Jinla has no sense of danger and can get easily distracted. What's more, high and low pitch sounds on the street can cause him to have a meltdown. Which is why we are bringing him to Tech Able to practice how to cross the road safely on the eye mirror, a simulator that lets people rehearse real-life scenarios. Hello. Coaching Chinla today is a familiar face, his former occupational therapist, Wei Ling. She was the one who helped Chinla improve his ability to follow instructions. The benefits of being able to learn in a controlled environment is such that because in a real situation, in a real life, there will be a lot of sensory information. For individuals with autism, they can be overwhelmed with the sounds, with the sight. Whereas uh, in a VR environment, we can control that. So then we can help them to learn the fundamentals first, for example, the safety aspect. So what do we need to do first, Jinla, before we cross the road? We need to? Tap the button. Okay, look for the green circle. Okay, bye, down, bye. let's go down a bit. Down. down. Okay. okay, wait, wait, wait oh, for the green. Oh. Okay, Good let's job. go. Now, before we cross, what do we need to do? Okay. Look left and right. Read, read, read. Look okay. left and right, right before moving. Okay, the car has stopped. Okay, we see the green man. Okay, let's cross. Bye, bye. And... Ta-da! Well done! Yay! Yay! Good job! Yay! Good job. 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 Yay! Good
So I think Jinder did a really good job today. He managed to complete all the activities successfully. Oh no, the car! Okay, come. Go. Okay, wait. Go down. So how do you feel about this whole program? I think it's quite useful. Yeah, it's... Probably need a lot more practice about looking left and right. Yes. Oh no! Wrong side! Turn right! Turn right! Turn right! Turn right! It's safer compared to doing it on the street. Do you home? Crossing the road safely is just one obstacle in Chinla's journey to be able to step out on his own. Bob and Hui Hui also fear that on his own, Chinla may wander off and get lost. Have you had any scares before? The time we brought him to the Purple Parade, um, he was in a bouncy castle playing and then um, Daddy was a photographer for the event so he was somewhere else. So I just took my eyes off him for a while and text Daddy to say, oh, I'm here already. And then the next moment when I try to search for him, he's gone. It's purple parade, right? Purple parade. Everyone is wearing purple colour. So it's it like was... you're running through the whole sea of people. It's all everyone, everyone wearing the same T-shirt. The event was just next to an MRT station. And we were just worried that he had run off into the <laughs> MRT station on his own and took an MRT train. So we were trying to search for him. Fortunately, we found him because I think he saw one of the bunny... The mascots? Yeah, mascots. He went off on his own to look for it. Yeah. So that was one very bad scare. Another time also in this playground, he was playing on his own and then we... Uh, yeah. My dad, he just took his eyes for off for a while and then the next moment, he's gone. We quickly mobilised all, all of us to go and play. <laughs> he went to one of the houses, the doors were open and then the resident was also very surprised. Why is he in my house kind of thing? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. found him in time. <laughs> so, letting Chun Le go anywhere on his own isn't a straightforward affair. Even if it's just to his granny's place, a few blocks away. But today, we are going to take a leap of faith. Yeah, and then you take the... He'll be undertaking his mission two. to grandma's place. Okay. Okay. Can you take the newspaper back for mommy? Yeah. Give okay. my poor the box, okay? Are you ready for challenge? Yes. Okay, good job. Okay, good job. Let's go. Read for the green man. That's right. Okay. Can you wear sandals properly first? Don't run, okay? Walk. No running, ah. Uh. Walk, ah. Uh. Okay. okay. Try. Okay. See you later. See you later, Gina. Bye. You can do it. To make sure Chinla doesn't go missing, we are tracking him via GPS. And we are taking other precautions too. Tagging along for his mission are three cameramen and two producers. But all of them will be keeping their distance, unless things go wrong. So it seems like he just crossed the road right now. Yeah. Oh, crossed already? Yeah. Oh, grandma. Okay. See that she's reaching soon. So he's getting really close, right? Yeah. This is the... Uh, okay, I think he's there already. He's at the uh, box. Looks like he's enjoying uh, running around. <laughs> <laughs> So it seems like Jun Le did complete the task successfully, right? Yeah. How does that make you feel? We will give you more challenge the next time. Uh, <laughs> go to the market. There's more junction that need to cross. Oh. Well done, Jun Le. Good job, Jun Le. You did it. See, mommy's gonna give you a reward. Well done. Bye bye. You want Oreo? Wow, good job, Lala. Well done. Did you raise your hands when you crossed the roads? Did you run or walk? Walk. 
Are you oh, sure? Right, right, right. Jinla just successfully completed his mission, and I've got a video clip of what happened downstairs. So let's take a look. <laughs> what on the day is awesome. Me eating. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, you can't wait for the green man. <laughs> It's still red light, eh? Yeah, at least you check the traffic. Okay, Charu, he's in the lift. He's gonna come out soon. So do you think more practice with the eye mirror will help his awareness crossing the road? The eye mirror, I think that one is useful, but on the road, the feel is different. I mean, at least the machine guides them. Like. It's a guide learn and then to learn, but and, and the actual practice, I think, is, is important also. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So you've been trying to teach Jun Le to cross the road for almost a year now. Have you seen any improvement from the start till now? Yeah, definitely there is improvement. But of course, hmm, from the video, this is something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't cross the road with the great red man. <laughs> yeah, because anything can happen. At least he did look left and right. <laughs> so at the start he didn't do that, and at the start he didn't raise yeah, his hand. Yeah, he just like, uh, just go. He's and very then. poor awareness of all this. Yeah. Then gradually he started to be a slightly more aware. Yeah. But still bad, <laughs> still bad, still bad. <laughs> Maybe and no lunch for him today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. More practice. Eh? I mean, we'll give him yeah. more practice. Mm. One of the main purposes of doing this exercise is to help him gain more independence. But he's only 13 years old this year. Why is there the urgency? It's also hurt me because uh, I, I had cancer. Bob and Hui Hui have been on a lifelong mission to prepare Jin Le, who's autistic, for the eventual day they are no longer around. A mission that's gained a greater degree of urgency about two years ago. How did you find out about your diagnosis? In 2018, uh, Chinese, Chinese New Year. Year, I was giving my Indian neighbour some Chinese goodies. When I was passing it to her, then she was telling me, hey, there's a lump in your neck. I didn't think too much about it. I thought it was just a swelling due to like infection or something like that. A few days later, I went to my GP and he, he was very concerned about it. So immediately, he referred me to an oncologist and the oncologist diagnosed that it was nose cancer. Mm. Mm. All the treatment followed like chemo, chemo and radiation. Yeah. And I completed the treatment in May 2018. Now you're feeling much better. And... Yeah, I, I do get tired easily. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not as energetic as before. So that's why also partly we wanted to train him as much as possible. Fine. Fine. He's now 13. And compared to our, I mean, we are 40 plus. When he's getting 20, we'll be getting like 50. That's why you have cancer or not, I think it's, it's important. Apart from getting Jin Le to learn life skills, have you thought about his financial independence in the future? We thinking of set up a special needs trust fund for him. We also want to train him to, to be able to work and hopefully he can earn a living for himself next time. Is there any area or skill that Jin Le excels in? He can memorize a lot of different, different languages. Different languages. I, um, Russian, German, German um, Persian. <laughs> Jawi and all things. Huh. He can write all the, all the alphabets. 
He likes to memorize all the different interesting things, right? Like brand of leaves. Sometimes we'll play this very silly game where we'll ask him, hey, what leaf is that? Then he can tell us, oh, that's a uh, Otis leaf, or mm. oh, that's a Kone. Kone leaf. Then we'll check it out whether it's uh, really that brand, and it turns out that most of the time he's quite accurate. Wow. Recently, he got an IT award like, in school, yeah. but um, I think it was more of a form of encouragement rather than showing any flair in it. Like. We're open to developing him in that area, but yeah. it really depends on whether he <laughs> is interested or not and whether he has strength in it. Like. I'm a computer scientist, and if I can write software to solve problems for a living, maybe so can Chinla one day. After all, this is a new and encouraging hiring trend in the tech industry. SAP and Microsoft were among the first companies to start a hiring program for candidates with autism spectrum disorder. Microsoft's program does away with a typical interview because people on the autism spectrum struggle to make eye contact and are nervous about new places. Instead, it invites candidates to be observed for a few weeks while they work on projects. Great publicity aside, there are good reasons why software companies want to hire autistic coders. Some autistic people excel in programming because they are highly logical in their thinking, in a literal step-by-step -step manner. And they enjoy the predictability of code. Every action is a result of a command. In school, Jinla learns Scratch, a block-based programming language but he gets only one hour of IT lessons each week. Perhaps I can start by getting Jinla to develop his coding skills even at home. Something that, you know, doesn't feel like homework. It appears a high school in Australia for children with autism has found just the device. Sphero, a programmable robot ball. It can roll around, make light and sound effects while being remote controlled via a smartphone or tablet. Its behavior can also be pre-programmed using code. And that's how coding is taught. Why did you decide to use Spheros? How is it different from other coding toys? Many coding tools are just meant to be used at the desk. You sit next to a computer, you learn how to code, but with Sphero, we can take it outside into the garden, or you can throw it in the lake, you can do coding in water. It was just like, we can go anywhere. Why do you think coding specifically is a suitable skill for children with autism to pick up? The way in which we teach students on the autism spectrum is often very similar to the language of coding. We might say, here's what you need to put on to get dressed before you go to school. Mm -hmm. And the sort of sequence that we teach there is very similar to the sort of sequences that you would use in coding. We also do if statements, like we say, if it's sunny, what are you going to wear outside? If it's rainy, what are you going to wear outside? So we're often teaching problem-solving strategies in the language of coding. Wait, you wear your shirt first. Yeah, you wear your pants and wear your underwear first. Two. That reminds me of how Bob and Hui Hui need to give Jin Le very specific step-by-step -step instructions for him to perform any task. Hi, baby. Hi, yeah. It might be tedious for the parents, but that's precisely how a programmer needs to code. Or in other words, talk to a computer. Miss one command or destination, or have an extra line in the computer program, and it all goes haywire. And Chinla has a lifetime of practice of being programmed by his parents in precisely that manner. It makes me hopeful that, despite his communication difficulties, Chinla could possibly deepen his coding skills with Sphero. I think I have just the right man to help Chinla get there, and he's come well prepared. Well, he knows what he's doing. After all, he specializes in teaching coding to children and has coached kids with autism spectrum disorder like Chinla. 
Hi, Hui Hui. Hey, hi. Hi, hi Jula. Say hi, Jula. Hi. hi, how are you? Jula, how are you? Hey, today? I'm fine. I'm fine. Ah. <laughs> Since it's the first time I'm meeting him, what challenges do you think we will face in, in, uh, in the lesson later? Okay, uh, he has a very short attention span, mm. so uh, mm. we'll give him a short break. Uh, mm. Like every 15 minutes, the teachers did tell us that he enjoys the IT classes. And I actually saw his progress, it's quite good. We can take that knowledge that was gained from scratch programming and see how uh, we can help him connect it to other aspects of programming. I think for today's lesson, activities will be centered around some fun activities. Uh, so hopefully that will engage uh, Jin. Three, two, one. Now let's do the first part first. Let's do go forward and back again. Can you do that? Okay, Chilla, listen. Can you Teacher do that? Davis, let's move the robot forward and then back. Right, forward and then back. Can you do that? All the way to the window, to the whiteboard. Okay, and then, and then come back. back. This is the goalkeeper. Chilla, look at the uh, goalkeeper. Chilla. Let me show you what you have to do. Uh. Your ball has to roll here, go around here, and, and up, up the slope. Okay, That's ready? Fine. And go. Oops! <laughs> you cannot <laughs> crash! Alright. You cannot crash the cone, okay, okay. Chilla. <laughs> the slope. Uh, almost there, almost there. Let's make this a bit bigger, okay? Now, as long as you touch this, this is the goal, okay? Let's try it. Okay. Give him a little reward first. Oh, let's try again. Ah, good. Oh, oh. And back. Okay, well done. Let's try to draw a square using this, right? So, and then when you press the start button. Okay, that's what you will do. Okay. Great. Now we're going to make Sphero like a wrecking ball, right? We have to control, use the line drawing, uh, make the Sphero crash down the tower, okay? As hard as you can. Oh. Oh, missed by just a little bit. <laughs> uh, how about we do this? We split up this one a little bit. So we have three of this. Now, Jinla, all you have to do is go for Crash, it. Huh? As hard as you can. Oh, missed. Okay, one more time. Yay! Yay! Today's session, I think he did very well. He was able to drive the robot uh, and he used the line programming tool to program it as well. He was quite attentive. Yeah, I was quite surprised he could stay engaged for quite some time. Uh. South, South, 180. Yes. The next day, our crew checked in on Jinla and David on their final two-hour lesson. Jinla was fully engrossed. Very good. Now you can type what you want Sphero to say. Can you say hello, Papa? Once you already press the start button. Hello, Papa. Hello, Papa. Papa. Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa! Okay, right? <laughs> Let's do a new program. How many sides does a square have, Junla? Four. Four, right? So let's start. Loop four times, okay? D. Use the heading. Yes, very good. Essentially, what we would tell Sphero to do is whatever direction you are facing at, uh, add 90 degrees to it. Hmm, very good. Come, let's try. Right, and right again, and right again. That's a square, right? Very good. You do a square. Well done. What you are supposed to do is this. You have to write the code for Sphero to move forward this way, and then down back to the base. So Chunla, this time, you have to do the code yourself, okay? How do you make the robot move forward? 
That might not solve your problem, you know. <laughs> this code won't work for this, yeah. Oh, it doesn't, eh? <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hey, don't bite. Try again. You have to go this way. Right. Go straight. Hey, go straight, not draw square. Mm. Okay. Oh, you go short a little bit. Uh -huh. Finish. And then turn. Turn how many degrees? That's Very right. Good. good job. And then... How many seconds? 50. Speed, Double okay. Double. Okay. Try. Okay. Uh, 90 Turn. degrees. Whoa. Turn 90 okay. degrees and... and... Uh, okay. You did it! Today's session, even though just referencing the quotes, right, we could see him in the way independently do it. I was quite impressed that he can do that uh, and, and he was able to take it off by himself. Wow, look at that. Right. Huh? Wow. I'm quite surprised the attention was sustained for longer mm. than we expected. Mm -hmm. He's able to follow instructions very well. So we can take a look at roles that require these skills like testing. The tester would look at the test script and then it will take through step by step and make sure that the program is supposed to work exactly as what is coded for. Through helping Jin Le, I've learned that technology can do quite a lot for children on the autism spectrum. Virtual reality can help ordinary people like us step into their shoes and can also help autistic children pick up life skills. What's more, the tech sector itself can also become a viable career choice for some of them. It's hard to say if Jin Lo would ever find a job in tech. He has a long way to go in his journey in the world of coding. But who knows? Maybe, just maybe, you might end up using an app he codes in the future.